You're listening to the Investor Success Podcast, the hit weekly show featuring inspirational stories to help real estate entrepreneurs do more deals while increasing their cash flow and net worth. My name is Jim Ingersoll, and I get to be your host for this podcast today. I'm also the founder of the Investor Success Mastermind. You can learn more about that at www.investorsuccessmastermind.com. Created this podcast to help motivate and inspire you, uh, whether you're a beginning or a veteran seasoned real estate investor, to go out there and take massive action and do more deals the right way. I want to welcome you to the show today. I also want to thank all of our regular success listeners. And if this is your first time with us, you get a warm uh, shout out as well. It's nice to have you along. We've got a great show. This is part two with the amazing Bo Eckstein from beautiful Bay Area, West Coast, San Francisco. Bo, welcome back to the Investor Success Podcast. Thanks, Jim. Great to be here. <laughs> You're the first person we've ever done two shows uh, consecutively with. That's how much stuff you've got going on, man. I'm honored. <laughs> well, last time we talked a lot about um, flipping houses, and you were you were going to tell us um, a little bit more about this guy before we dig into cash flow about this guy in Southern California that's flipping a fifty million dollar property. Can you continue that story or finish it up for us? Right. So just um, you know, as far as just getting out there, I was at a, attended a real estate uh, syndication uh, symposium. And I happened to meet this guy next to me, and I just started talking to him a little bit. And I, I heard him talk, and I'm like, oh, this guy's really smart, right? So when you're at these events, you can tell the guys you guys and girls you want to talk to because those are the ones that you're going to learn from. So I, I just started talking to him. We, we hung out a bit, and, and I, I found out more about the projects he's doing. And, and anyways, he's, um, he's a builder by trade, then got into um, – development and then now real estate syndication and he's doing really big projects he's doing he's done a ton of uh apartment deals and he's done a ton of high he does high-end luxury homes i mean he big does like high-end yeah i mean he's doing five six seven million dollars he's doing a beachfront house that's going to be a you know a 50 million dollar house but those type of he's a, an extreme i mean most people don't play in that world i, I don't think i would ever have the stomach to play in that world nor do I want to. Um, <laughs> I've got to, what I want to do is just cash flow. Okay, I, I don't need that. My life's pretty simple. I like to eat out. I like to do a little traveling. I don't. I don't spend that much money on a, a materialistic things. So um, if I can just build up my cash flow to a certain amount, then I don't really care about becoming this monster, uh, you know, billionaire real estate right. mogul. So it's more so about that's living a life of purpose and significance. I think. But, um, so I know you've got a goal for like a certain number of times your living expenses for passive income. How does that work? So, right. So one of the masterminds they go to, um, they taught me the 100 percent rule. So whatever your monthly overall expenses with your mortgages, your car, your cell phone, uh, insurance, your your cost of food, everything. Let's say that cost me as a single guy, 38 years old. Um, I don't know. I, I, I my expenses here are pretty high. Let's say it's seven thousand dollars a month. Okay. And that basically I live for seven thousand. That that doesn't include most of the vacationing or anything yeah, like yeah. that. But but so the first step is to come to be a hundred percent is to get seven thousand dollars a month of net cash flow. So that now makes you a hundred percenter, meaning you could essentially just live off your cash flow. And that and would then, come from being a landlord or a note holder or that kind of stuff, right? That sort yeah. of churns in every month. Yeah. So it's a little bit harder to be a note holder in the beginning as a real estate sure. investor because because usually you need to yes, uh, ha go. have the funds or at least know how to leverage the funds and yep. make a make a margin or do some kind of wrap deal where you can actually leverage. But yep. so, anyways, so. Here I am flipping houses, and you know it's it's a job to flip a house because you you get paid once and it's great. The time you pay taxes because it's short term gains. It's <laughs> it's, it's really taxes are killers because you're a dealer with the IRS. Yeah, so so it goes back then to um, what model would make the most sense, and having just a certain amount of capital, and and so then it all. You know, it came together through through masterminding, 
uh, and going to events, I met a gentleman who didn't have much real estate experience, but started buying properties in the Midwest, and he was in search of capital. He, he didn't know how, if you don't know anything about real estate, it's hard to try and get money from other people. Hey, I'm buying these houses. <laughs> and, and, and Trust me, trust me, my name's Bernie Madoff. Yeah, and they look, you know, to him, to him they made sense. I could buy it for this much money, and um, I can put in X amount of dollars, and then I can rent them out and get X in rent. And so I looked at some of his deals, and he had bought in one property, and uh, he just was like sitting on it because he ran out of capital. So he, he needed, this one was actually a bigger remodel. So we went back and forth. I got to know him a little bit better, and I said, okay, listen, I'll, you know, I, I I didn't plan on investing in the Midwest right now, but let's do this deal and see how it goes. Then we did that deal, and uh, then I started looking at more deals, and we just we ended up forming an LLC. Awesome. Together as partners, or actually, my other company is a partner. And yeah, so anyway, I'm not really the partner. It. I know what you mean. My companies are the partners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then we just. Um, started to buy these properties and renovate them and and um, and and yeah now I'm just trying to find more deals right now because it's just a very simple rinse and repeat type model I've now just um, focused on putting marketing out there so I have a website that's feeding me about a, one to two three leads three good leads a month right now um, and then I have uh, obviously just I have a couple of realtors sending me deals, um, and so then you're we're sitting in the Bay Area and you're collecting leads on houses in Indiana. Yeah, so how do you I'll do that? Back. A lot of people are probably scratching their head, thinking, "Wow, how do you do that from thousands of miles away?" So um, I uh, I set up a Trevor uh, Investor Carrot website. Yep, and it's uh, I can't think of the domain right now, but anywhere way we went in, we keyworded it. And now it's it's ranking organically, so I'm not paying to uh, you know be a, it's not a paid ad. Actually, I'll, I'll pay per click is good, um, but I don't think you need to start with it until you get the foundation. Um, and then, so I'm on like the first page for wow. sell my house. You know, I'm not, and I'm still working on it. But I started getting leads. Then I got this call from this guy, and we went back and forth. He happened. To, the funny thing is, he happened to be in California. Huh. And his son grew up in, funny. in Indiana, and, and uh, he wanted to sell the property. And so we're going back, we're exchanging texts, going back and forth, because I, I had my uh, handyman do a walkthrough. Good. And then finally, I'm like, okay, we got to get we got to get to the point where we're going to negotiate. So I said, I text him, what do you want for the property? And he said, I want, you know, I bought it for this, I've owned it for this, it's been rented for eight years. I want uh, $34,000. Well, I you know I use Daniel's uh, rehab. rehab yeah, that's the, that's a I I bought the um, paid subscription of it. Okay, it's like way better because it's it's um it's cloud based, and and he keeps on adding all the cool stuff to it. So he does. I, it's amazing. Um, I am super happy about that. I'm super happy about. The investor carrot, and and so going back to those two things, I learned about investor carrot through you guys, through you and Daniel, and obviously yep. Rehab Valuator, because I went through your bank elimination blueprint yep. program, and um, and so it's just that's how this all works. You have to like yeah. you know get to know people, like listen to the interviews and figure out who's doing what, what they're doing, and just get the little nuggets. Right, right. So, anyways, right. I texted them back after. Going back and forth, I said I could. The most I can pay is twenty-two thousand. I'll, I'll pay cash. And he's like, "Fine, just let's close in two weeks." <laughs> I mean, just like that, you got you got a, like a thirty percent discount. So you bought you bought it for twenty-two. It's in South Bend. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. And uh, I I didn't even look at it really. I mean, yeah. I saw a few pictures, but you have the team in place. They walk through it. I get the idea of what I could resell for. I um, bought it in a neighborhood that I'm buying in yeah. um, because you got to know the neighborhood, especially in mixed um, economic areas. Because one street could be really crime ridden while there's not. So it's a really good neighborhood. I know I could fix it up and turn around and sell it for 75000 maybe more. Because 
in the Midwest, they'll do a lot more uh, land contracts and things like that. Where in the West Coast, we don't do that kind of stuff. So you got to learn all that kind of stuff because it's different there than it is on the West Coast. Well, that goes to uh, Gary Proctor sent in a question through our Facebook um, questionnaire for you today, Bo. And he was saying, basically, how did you build your boots on the ground team when you're thousands of miles away in the Bay Area to get you up and rolling in uh, South Bend? Um, well, well, first, you're going to have to go there. I mean, I was fortunate enough I partnered with the right person that used to live there, mm-hmm. right? So how did I do that? I networked and I found an opportunity and I took advantage of an opportunity. Right. You leveraged it, your network. Yeah, leveraged my network. But now it's going back there and, and every time we go back there, we grow our uh, handyman network. We grow our uh, agent network. We, um, we had to go through um, one property management company because... Uh, they they essentially wanted to uh, do the rehabs for us, and it just that it wouldn't make sense for us. So, anyways, they they actually wasted our time. Then we found a good property manager. She's she's only got about fifty rentals right now, so she's just about to launch her business. So we knew she she'd be more hands on, and she has been, and she's been going and walking properties for us, taking pictures, finding different roofers and vendors for us. So it's really worked out, and so. Are we learning? Yes. I mean, there's there's always a learning curve, but but um, I feel very good about the deals. Good. I'm, that I'm boots on the in. ground is so important. And I recently uh, found a property manager company too, and I was, so I'm kind of curious about this because I had to choose. Like a friend of mine's got a, a freaking huge property management business, and but I didn't really want to be with this gigantic one. Instead, I went with somebody like you said that's got less than 50 units. Um, so you and I came to, again, man, we think alike a lot, which is awesome. But so you came to sort of the same conclusion to find somebody a little bit smaller that can spend a little more time and, and help you as your boots on the ground from a couple thousand miles away. Well, yeah, because you got to think about it. Yep. Well, like if I was a hard money broker and I only had one investor, he's he, he or she is my wheel, my will. I have to like kiss their butt. Yep. So, so put yourself in her shoes now. If I have 50 units with her, that's half her business, and I've helped her grow her her cash flow because she's getting, you know, we pay her. We don't. We've we we've agreed to pay her 10 percent, which is pretty high. Usually, you can get it down to about eight, seven percent if you got a lot of units. But for right now, we're building our portfolio, and she's doing a heck of a lot of work for us. So, we give up a little. So the best thing about this deal, going back to this deal. Yep. Is that so? I bought it for twenty-two. Our budget to rehabs uh, uh, ten grand, so that's thirty-two. Uh, <laughs> and then I uh, I went out and without even looking for an investor, uh, a friend that I I grew up with knows what I'm doing because I post on social media yeah. like, hey, here's a house. I'm doing, and he said, listen, I'm not getting the return I need. And this guy is thirty-eight years old. And um, he's he's a multimillionaire. Wow! Uh, so, um, uh, so he's a perfect candidate to borrow some money from. And so he told me that uh, you know his his stock portfolio has only got uh, given him about four percent. And that's this was two or three wow. months ago, or two months ago. So uh, year to date. So he's looking for a better return. So I go. I said, okay, listen. I'll, I'll pay you an extremely great return. Um, you're going to put up all the money, though, including rehab. And he was willing to do that. So now uh, we've got this property that we have no money into, and uh, we'll have it turned around. We closed on it. I don't know. It took us a while to close because what you learn about the Midwest is they're not like California. Things take <laughs> things take longer. Yeah. And actually, the property manager thought I was mean when she first met me, just because uh-huh. I'm. They're not just. They're not used to to me, you know. Like you're aggressive, uh, yeah. I'm super. I'm I'm really not. I'm a very easy business person, but to to somebody from the Midwest, they might get the wrong impression of me because I'm used to like being like velocity, <laughs> velocity. Right. Yeah, I'm right. the same way. See, you and I have some of the same DNA. So we, so I understand. People say the same about me. Like you're a little too intense or a little too high strung or. That you know, I'm from New York, so they're like that New Yorker comes out in you or whatever. I was actually born in New York too, actually. See, yeah, I was I was born in Middletown, New York. Um, 
Awesome. So so we so yeah so so we closed escrow and then we had uh, the remainder of the funds was about almost thirteen grand left in the deal. So after we rehab, we'll still have two or three thousand in reserves. So there we have no money in the deal. And then obviously, what did I send Adam, my private money lender? I sent him my uh, rehab evaluator printout with my pictures and my comps. Yeah. And I did. I I went on to Google Earth and I got a map and I showed him why I'm buying in this location. Why, you know, I'm not just buying some random house because it's got cash flow. I'm buying specifically in certain areas and renting out to postgraduate students because they're good tenants. And so for Notre Dame. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, but, but you have to have those type of strategies in place. I actually have, um, uh, a couple markets right now uh, in Indiana. Indiana to me is there's a lot of ripe opportunities. Um, so um, there's a lot of markets that we we're, we're, um, have deals on. I actually just got. It's amazing, you know, if you have the social media. Some lady just wanted to sell. She has a package of homes. They're all over Indiana, and it's just she found me on YouTube. So it's just there it goes again. <laughs> but anyways, going back to Always this deal. Always be marketing. Yeah, going back to this deal. I mean, it's sweet. No money in. Um, we've created forty thousand dollars in equity. We've got uh, when expenses are paid and property management and the the note for the thirty four thousand dollar loan we borrowed. Uh, we've got uh, depending on what the rent comes in at. Um, our property manager told me a number that I think is way too high, but I'm not going to discredit it. But we're going to get somewhere between a thousand. Thousand to twelve fifty a month. Um, so would that give you like say eight hundred bucks a month cash flow potentially? Yeah, I'd say it's about seven hundred a month. Mm -hmm. I mean that's outstanding. So for a thirty-four thousand dollar house, which is cheaper than people in California pay for a car. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you have forty thousand dollars of net worth or boost in equity, and make seven hundred bucks a month. Rinse, repeat. Yeah, yeah, no money in. No money so, in. So, and I'm paying a fantastic return, and obviously if anything ever goes wrong, vacancies and stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, it, we have a reserve set up, and, and I'm not taking the cash out of the business. I'm letting right. these things just accrue for a while. And so, we're borrowing all the money. I mean, I put money in a few of them, but I, right. you know, I can't do that anymore because I don't. I need to keep reserves. You always should keep reserves. So what we do is then we find a portfolio lender yep. after, you have, after you have a tenant in for 90 days, after you, after you rehab and have a tenant in for 90 days, they'll use new appraised value. They'll go up to 75%. Your minimum loan amounts are typically 45000 50000 So you might have to package two or three houses together. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Harvest the money out. Pay your investors out, off because yep. they're, they're just dead investors, right? They're not a JV partner. Right. Now, I'm also, I'm also using your JV model, but I'm not... Yeah, I haven't used it yet. I, I, because some investors want to take advantage of the appreciation, the the, yes. the, the tax write offs. So you got to listen to what your investors want. There's win win ways on every single situation. It just what do they want? For me, in the beginning, it's just it's just easy. I don't want to have to answer to anybody other than the fact that hey, I'm going to pay your mortgage on time, and yep. give you a, give you a great return. I agree. And, and I, that's I, you it. know, in this market that's appreciating, I don't really want to be giving up half my equity or half the appreciation. So if you can debt finance like that, I think it's a great way to go. And finding short term money is easier than long term anyway. So um, as long as you got the back end with a portfolio lender there in Indiana or, or whoever, are you using a nationwide portfolio lender or one in Indiana? Well, actually, I um, I haven't refinanced any of them yet. Okay. Because um, I just started this like four or five months ago. Yep. Um, but the plan is to get a hundred of these in the next two years, a hundred doors. So, um, I think the best cash flow deal we got so far, <clears throat> I bought a, a fourplex for, uh, I think we paid 32 for it for a fourplex. Mm. And we're, we've, we're putting in about 14 grand in it. So, uh, it puts us in, we're in at about 46, 48,000. Yeah, less than 50. Less than 50. And 
uh, we bought it with a, one tenant in it, and we, we were, we were just finally evicting that tenant. But all the other three units are now rented and uh, rehabbed. So we got uh, 600 on the bottom two, so that's 1,200 plus 550 up top, and then we'll get another 550, I believe. That's 2,300 a month gross rent. <laughs> yep. So or we'll a thirty-two thousand dollar investment. Your friends in the Bay Area must just shake their head when they see your deals you're structuring, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, I got a lot of um, wealthy people that I know. So it's definitely a lot of people still have a stigma and they don't want to invest anywhere other than the Bay Area. So it's fine. There's going to be people like that. Right. You just you just pass on them. But um, there's a, there's definitely enough money. I mean, my friend, like I just funded my last deal, he's now excited to do more deals. So he's got a, he told me he has a line with the bank that he could borrow at 3% off of, uh, he's got a uh, margin account. Mm -hmm. I, think he, I think he has access to a million bucks. How many properties can I buy, use that million bucks? And, well, you and can then get your 100 doors pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, that's just one guy. Right. And, that, and then obviously... I know, you know, I have the skill sets to do real real estate syndication. I know the right attorneys to speak to. So, one day, will I ever just do some kind of fun and just just go out and acquire the properties like this? Maybe. And then, then at the end of the day, you know, at some point, I'm not going to want to manage a hundred houses. Maybe, maybe I'll 1031 exchange. Yep. Into just a couple big big pieces, or I could do a right. A, you could do a 1031 step down transaction. So there's ways out, but you just got to be patient because the whole key comes back to I think your your boots on the ground team and getting that property manager and then getting your contractors and then from there if you got somebody who can rehab it, you got somebody who can rent and manage it. It's pretty close to mailbox money for you, which is nowadays ACH, but money just sort of flows in and then you leave it there for reserve and someday you're in great shape. Exactly, exactly. And then, you know, I, I want to get away from, I like selling houses. I've got a, I, I'm getting listings like a ton lately, but um, right. I, I don't really, I, I'll probably keep that business, but I'm definitely going to get somebody in place that just handles all the showings and all that stuff. Because I, I just don't have time between that and then try to originate hard money loans and then try to find the deals in the Midwest it's time consuming because I really what I'd like to do is I've only been to Indiana twice and so it's and they're short trips is I need right. to go there I'd like to go there for you know 12 to 13 days at a time and just go and and, and, and uh, yeah and and just because I could be I could 10x what I'm doing right now if I do that and uh, and I could do in a year's time I could get could become a hundred uh, 200 percenter right Right, so right. That's where it all started. That hundred percenter, and that's a great goal for everybody. If you could two x that, that is great. And you mentioned ten x, so I, I've got to ask you because we read a lot of the same things. Have you read any good books lately? Um, I know we both read ten x your goals. We wrote read the Miracle Morning. Anything sort of resonating with you lately? Um, let's see. I don't read. I listen. Yep. On Audible. Uh, let's see what I got there. I'll give you just a sampling. Okay. Uh, I never listened to Gary Keller's The Millionaire Real Estate, so I just got that, which is an old book. You had listened to that first. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, the One Thing by Gary Keller. That was uh, pretty good. Boy, that's a tough one for you and I because we both have our hands in a lot of pots. <laughs> How to Win at, at the Sport of Business by Mark Cuban. It was a short story. Mm -hmm. Loopholes of the Real Estate. Uh, loopholes of Real Estate. Um, Robert Kiyosaki by Garrett Sutton. Yeah, I've read that one. ABCs of uh, Real Estate Investing yep. by Ken McElroy. Um, I got Traction, which... Um, Traction's tra great. Yeah, tra Traction. It's sort of uh, like a new... Ver to me, it's sort of like a new version of Good to Great by Jim Collins. Yeah, and then Pitch Anything. Oh, yeah. pitch. That was a pretty good book. Spin Selling, I got halfway through that. I'm not that interested in that book. Uh, the Ten X by Roll by Grant Cardone. Cardone's six, great. Six months of six figures with Peter Void. He's a young entrepreneur. I really like that guy. I didn't know his book was out. I listened to his podcast. It's good, by the way. It's called yeah. Young Entrepreneur's Lifestyle. 
Four Hour Work Week, Tim Ferriss, oh, yeah. the the Myth, Michael Gerber. Oh yeah. And, and then the other, if you want to learn about marketing, what I what, one of my uh, uh, my biggest um, I'm a biggest big fan of this guy. Uh, his name's Joe Polish. Hmm. He has a company called um, Piranha Marketing, and he's got a podcast called I Love Marketing, and he's got a couple other podcasts. But this guy was uh, in carpet carpet sales, and wow. and um, kind of became like kind of got frustrated and, and became like a sales machine. And he created systems, hmm. and now he teaches. He started teaching other carpet cleaners how to 10x their business. Now he teaches. And he interviews like the most interesting people. So, um, you know, I know you want to learn real estate people, but you also have to. Oh, oh yeah. You, you have to learn this too, and it, it really helps your you grow your kind of the whole. I think real estate investing teaches you the if you're a good real estate investor, you can do pretty much any business. It's kind of business skills. Real estate's yeah, all about. I would encourage everybody think of yourself as an entrepreneur, and real yeah. estate is just your vehicle that you're using right now. So I agree with you on that. All right. Um, let me see if I've covered all these questions real quick, Bo, from our some of our listeners. Let's see, Isabel Chavez says, how do you manage all this? Um, how do you find your deals in the Midwest? I think we covered all that really well. Let's see, Julio Gonzalez said, what advice do you have for a brand new investor when buying the very first cash flowing property? Take that one as our final question. Thank you, Julio. Um, use rehab evaluator and uh, try to buy properties that you're all in at 70% or less of the fixed up value. I try to buy at 60% or 65%. So if I buy it for 50, I need 15,000, it's worth 100. So I'm in at 65, it's worth 100. So you want to be in it there as far as equity position. And then for cash flow, I put it into Daniel's system and I, I, I I look for a debt debt coverage ratio of 1.5. Bank looks banks look for 1.2, but on single family and small multifamily, you want to make sure this thing's cash flow on high. And that those are the two. I don't really look at cap rate. I those are the two indicators. And obviously, I really go through the incoming expenses because on Daniel Software, you can break out everything and make sure in your line item when you're putting expenses, you're also putting expenses where you factor in a vacancy, even though it's it may be rented right now, put at least a minimum vacancy factor, put your property management fee, if you're paying any utilities, make sure you're dialed that in, check the county records for property taxes, and also, I always put in a reserve amount, like 75 bucks, and then that's when I look at my final number, I go, okay, this meets those two criteria, and also, now you know you have a pr property that's got a good equity position, and it's also cash flow, so... Good even advice. in a even in a down market, you can sell it on a land contract, uh, especially in the Midwest. And so, a land contracts. I never really worked with them here because it's different. But land contracts mm -hmm. are 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 pretty amazing if you do them right. Because I was looking at a house I was going to buy for five grand, and it needed about fourteen thousand wow. thousand <laughs> <laughs> needed needed about fourteen thousand in work. But so here's the thing. So I'm in at twenty thousand. I sell it on a land contract for forty, right. and the the no rates eight percent. I mean, your your actual return on investment is just unbelievable. So that's my next strategy I'm working on. I'm just right now I'm doing the basics, Notes. but yep. so yeah, yeah. So there's there's so many strategies, and uh, it's all about just keep on going to your you know get involved in masterminds, keep on yep. going, keep on getting online, and and whenever you have time to get listen to a webinar. And that's how you keep growing. And then eventually you'll get where you want to go. And it's not easy. I mean, I struggle every day, but I get yep. up at five in the morning and work out and yep. and, and work. And get it rolling. You got to be committed. You got to be motivated and ready to take massive action. Great advice. And I'm glad you mentioned Mastermind, Bo. We really enjoy having you in our Investor Success Mastermind as well. And appreciate your coming up to our boot camp and things like that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this out, Bo. I know your time's valuable as well. So thank you very much for joining us today um, on the Investor Success Podcast. Thanks to all of our success listeners for tuning in today. Hope you took a lot of notes. You may want to go back and listen to this and Bo's previous episode again. 
And again, my name is Jim Ingersoll. I'm your host for the podcast today. I'm also the founder of the Investor Success Mastermind. You can check that out at InvestorSuccessMastermind.com or pick up your free gift at BigMoneyInvestor.com. Bo, thanks for uh, joining us and have an awesome day doing all those cash flow and high equity deals. Thank you. Thank you. It's been fun and I'm uh, super motivated to go make some money now. <laughs> See you later.